Hey guys, it's Graham. What's cracking? This is a review of a book that I read last November, so six or seven months ago. I really, really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. Uh, I don't know if Jace Killen has written others in this series, but I would definitely read more if he has. Uh, but it's one that has popped up for a couple of reasons in my memory, just based on things that are breaking in the news. Um, one element of the plot had to do with terrorists uh, sabotaging a bunch of airplanes so that they could tank the stock that the airplanes were connected to and thereby commit some financial crimes to enrich themselves and screw over some other people. You can see why that's on my mind with all the uh, Boeing stuff that's been happening the last couple of months. And uh, then the news that broke this week about a, uh, a famous YouTube celebrity who got arrested for a, uh, a drug charge. Um, it got me thinking of this character in particular, uh, Joaquin Serrano, who uh, <clears throat> he might have been the first type of character that I've read like this, who was a recovering drug addict. Uh, I noticed particular ways that he talked about his drug usage and his drug recovery. Uh, since then, I've listened to videos, podcasts, interviews with other people that have gone through AA or similar drug rehab programs. And I noticed the peculiar language that they use. They never talk about themselves as having recovered. They always say recovering, uh, present progressive tense. It's always something that they are in the middle of. They never treat it as being done. I think that's a very healthy and constructive way to look at addiction because it, it doesn't put you above it. It shows that you remain vulnerable to it. Uh, in fact, a couple of months ago, Gary Beekler from Nerdrotic was on Side Scrollers, and uh, Stuttering Craig interviewed him and talked to him about the fact that, yeah, you know, back in the day, Gary had uh, had a couple of drug charges of his own, had spent time in jail over it, and uh, you know now he's a, a very successful businessman and family man, and somebody that you know, all of us in nerddom look up to, and. Craig asked him a, a pointed question and he says, you know, how, how do you stay on track? You've been 10 years clean. How do you uh, like literally keep your nose clean in this sense? And Gary was just completely honest about it. He says, I've, I've been through rehab more than once and uh, my last relapse was bad, which relapses are not uncommon. And it's, it's hard to climb out of a relapse. It's hard in a different way than it is to climb out of the initial addiction. And he said that he just knows that if he falls down again, um, that'll be the last one. He doesn't have another run in him. He says, if I, if I do it again, it'll, it'll do me in. Um, there's a crucial humility that comes with that. People say that addicts have to want to get better. And the ones that don't, you know, for whatever reason, if we're talking about the genetic component of um, addiction, there is a hereditary quality to it or just personal psychological stubbornness and pride that uh, pushes people to not want to improve in that way. Um, you know, the, the humility element of it is, is crucial. And I think we're all hoping for that, for the for this particular personality. The reason why I haven't mentioned who it is is just that I, I know that YouTube likes to pick up on words that you say in videos and attach it to the algorithm. And, uh, you know, it's not that I'm trying to cover for this guy. It's just that I don't want to get swept up in the internet wave of bull crap that will come from, you know, having his his haters find out that I'm, I'm talking about him. Just uh, so if, if you know who it is, you know who it is. And uh, we're hoping for the sake of his kids that uh, he gets it together and, and is able to come back stronger from this. But in the meantime, this particular book, Unknown Soldier, has, has been on my mind. And I realized uh, I haven't done a video about it. So as a way of doing a long intro, I'm going to read you some excerpts from my posting on Upstream Reviews back in November. I started out saying, uh, apparently I've hit that age as a reader where I enjoy technical thrillers based on financial crimes. I had just read The Hunt for Red October. I've also read uh, The Killing Floor by Lee Child, the first Jack Reacher novel, which is a, you know, a story of murder and small town intrigue and stuff. Sorry, I hope you can't hear that noise. I'm out in the shop and there's a cricket who's really pissed off that I'm talking. But anyway, like that ultimately was a story about counterfeiting. 
But I said, were it not for those two mega franchises and their overlapping similarities, being that the main character was a, a military bro who solves a financial crime, I said, I might not have appreciated The Unknown Soldier as much. Uh, but even so, it's a very strong novel on its own. I just remember as I was reading it, thinking like, oh, this has some similar elements to, uh, to Jack Ryan, to Jack Reacher, and it's done with a, a similarly adept hand. Uh, more importantly, though, it, it bucks the tropes of a genre with an unconventional but endearing protagonist. You see, unlike Jack Ryan and Jack Reacher, who were, uh, you know, one was an army special investigator, the other was a Marine, um, Joaquin Serrano is a recovering meth addict, and uh, he was even in prison for a while. Those two things are important, not just to his character, but to the story, because it, it explains why his character is the way that he is, and uh, why he also has connections and assets that make him valuable to the government as far as infiltrating groups that are engaged in terrorist and drug trafficking activity. Joaquin Serrano is a recovering meth addict. In his teens, he discovered his dad was having an affair, and that drove him to do drugs, which resulted in him killing someone he loved in a car accident. He went to prison, where he made contacts with the cartel and also learned stock trading from a white-collar inmate. Once he got out, Joaquin, called Jackie by his closest friends, found out that his dad wasn't really having an affair, but that he was a CIA operative, and the woman he was involved with was actually his handler. He was doing deep cover-ops on the cartel, who had him whacked. All of this is emotionally devastating for Joaquin, who leverages his cartel relations to become an informant with the FBI, picking up where his father left off so he can help take down the cartel. This gets you into the meat and potatoes of the story, and that's where the tension really builds. Jace Killen's knowledge and research of the financial and governmental components of the story really shine through. Jace is the author. There are times when he explains things to the reader by having two characters explain it to each other, especially the financial stuff, and it comes off natural and not heavy-handed. That's a quality that helped me to stay immersed in the larger story. Jackie is a compelling protagonist in many ways because of overcoming his drug addiction. Killen put a fair amount of research into 12-step uh, programs, and he kept Jackie's addiction in the forefront of the story. He never sweeps it under the rug and just you know, uses it as a stepping stone to get him into prison and then get him out and he's fine. You know, he's he's got to constantly deal with the repercussions of that decision. As for the setting, it's basically our world kind of back during the 2010s. Um, certain entities are obviously based on real ones. There's a group called the New Islamic State. They're basically ISIS. There's a vague cartel that's just fill it in. It could be any drug cartel. It could be the Escobars. It could be the Sinaloas. It's the cartel. Uh, there are no politics in the book. It's just you know, current year stuff or for the setting, as it were. Um, current events, we'll say, but not current year. Uh, as far as content, Killen uses a delicate hand with the harder elements of the story, like prison life and cartel behavior. Like, yes, there is abuse and assault and beatings and language and stuff, but uh, he doesn't walk you through it word by word to emphasize the grotesquery. Uh, the language never goes above an S-bomb. There's some gun violence. There's implications of sexual situations. But again, he's, he's delicate with it. He doesn't pretend that it's not there, but he doesn't revel in it either. And I, I appreciate that as somebody who doesn't like content uh, that delves way too far into the R-rated stuff. So if you're a fan of Tom Clancy or Lee Child and you want something that's maybe a little bit lighter, but uh, just as intelligent, uh, give this one a shot. It's thought provoking, especially when Killen analyzes real world events like stock crashes and international conflicts and industrial disasters and how they could all be connected by deep behind the scenes crimes in the financial sector. In a strange way, it makes our twisted world make just a little more sense. Uh, after the second or third major Boeing incident this year, I <laughs> I recommended this book to my brother and said, "Hey, you know, <laughs> if you want to have some real fun, it'll uh, it'll open up your eyes to a whole other series of possibilities with this stuff." So, a hearty endorsement to the Unknown Soldier by Jace Killen. So yeah, all around really good book. Give it a shot. Till next time, drive safe. See you out there. <laughs>